Welcome everybody to this uh, session about uh, Joomla web services, also called the Joomla API. Um, the Joomla API was introduced in Joom with Joomla 4 and I was aware back then it was a huge feature, but I'm not a coder personally, so I was missing the starting point, like a little snippet, an example of code, 10 lines of code. Uh, to start with, something working to create an article in Joomla, to update an article in Joomla. And this happened actually last year at the Joomla Day DAG, um, where, uh, where Peter Martin made a presentation about the Joomla API, exactly with this, little snippets. And then going back to Belgium, I thought, uh, oh, I have to play with that further now that I have a starting point. And I started to exchange it with uh, to exchange with Alexandre Elise about that, and uh, this is how this presentation started. Um, as you can see, um, when I start to write about something, I give every detail. So it's not that you need every detail of that, but if you uh, if you want to dig into it, you you have everything here. Um, and what is the goal of this presentation? It's to um is to we have a script a php script independent independent of joomla thanks to which you can import your articles in joomla or synchronize your articles in joomla uh together with their custom fields uh directly from a google sheet or from a csv file actually because you are accessing technically the google sheet as a csv file um, thanks to the Joomla API and it's so great because I have many use cases like I have uh, I, I can show website here I should have opened it before but um, I have several websites about movie festivals or concert festivals and like here there are hundreds of films with many custom fields for each film right uh because it gives keywords uh themes and uh the company behind that the link to the video and blah 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 so potentially there are and the duration and the year and the languages and and the movie maker and etc etc so actually um i'm using this script to import about 3000 articles together with their 16 custom fields plus the native Joomla feeds, like like the title, like the, the date, like the alias, like the image, and etc., etc., uh, just in one click. So it's so comfortable, because for my end users, it means that they have their 3,000 films like this on the Google Sheet, okay, with different columns. The order of the columns has no importance, but um, here is, for example, the column uh, title so okay we do have the title for each article which will be created or synchronized um, so um, that's the goal and uh, before going further if you have your computer before the end of the day just go to this link to the Alexandre Elise uh, github account uh, to the J4 uh, API examples and just click on the little star button, right? Because we did this just for fun and his only reward is, is, is to get some stars to know that uh, this is appre appreciated by, uh, by the community. So ju it just takes one second, uh, just go and, and do that. Um, oh yeah. But it's in the links. So this whole presentation is available on slides.wordweb.be, just like the presentation of this morning, slides.wordweb.be. There you have all the presentations, so you have uh, access to um, every detail. Um, so the first thing in Joomla when you want to use the API is that you need to create a new user or use your own account. But let's suppose we create a new user. Uh, 
because the API, maybe I'm si simplifying a bit, but the API is only for super users, right? Um, so if you create a user in Joomla, I don't make the demo live because I have the screenshots, right, to go a little bit faster. So you just create a user the regular way, you give it a strong password, um, you assign it to the super user, user group, um, and then if you go to the Joomla API, maybe I zoom a bit, if you go to the Joomla API token, which is a kind of password for the API uh, tab, then, well, actually, you've just created a new user, but you cannot see the API key of that user because that user is not you, even if you created that other super user, right? So if you want to see the API key, you should log out, log in again as this uh, user, um, and then you can go back to the tab and see the token. So you should just be aware that if you write a script somewhere, if you use this script or adapt it, whatever, and th this token is the password of a super user on your website, right? So if you just make it public because it's on your GitHub account, or you or somebody else has access to the FTP serve to, to, to via FTP to to that script, yeah, you're you're showing in clear a password, a kind of password for, for a super user. So okay, be cautious with those um, tokens. And uh, you can also reset the tokens. So like uh, here, this token is no more active uh, for a long time. But if you want to reset it, you just click on the reset button here. You resave the user and it has a new, a new uh, token. Um, then here, I won't repeat Peter Martin's session of last year, right? So I will go fast onto that, but it's just the, the starting point. So I will um, go quickly, but just uh, a few a few words when you want to create articles technically in the api vocabulary it is called post when you want to update an article it is called patch when you want to fetch to pull articles then it's called get right so then you know the basic words um so this is a website where there are no articles yet for example and um you can simply go to this link on GitHub to have an example of a uh, postscript, so to create an article. What does it look like? Well, actually, it's just okay, a, 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 few, um, a few lines of script. Um, and what do we have? We have one line, which is a URL to the website. So obviously, if you want to play with this script, you have to put the URL of your own website, right? Um, then you have the token. You just put your own token instead of this fake token. Fine. Um, the category ID. So each category, if you go in the interface, has an ID in the last column. So in this example, the category ID is two, but you could select type another category. Then we have an array in the code. An array just to define uh, the title, the alias, uh, the article text, uh, the category ID, which we are fetching from above. Uh, we can also specify the language. So here we just put the star because in the database, a star means all languages. But you could uh, write uh, DE dash uh, capital DE if, if it was German. Uh, the meta description, meta key, all the native uh fields of joomla you can put them in this uh in this array and and then the rest you don't even have to touch is the uh technical part just to call the joomla website and send this information to the site um just a thing so here in the code it's th there is an article text but in joomla actually there is uh, a column for intro text in the database and a column for full text. So if you want to know more about this, uh, read this paragraph. But I have little time, so I'll go quickly on that. Um, technically, there are only four necessary fields, mandatory fields. All the rest is just extra. If you want to add meta description, do it. 
but the necessary fields are title, the article text, which is a, uh, kind of the intro full text, uh, the category ID, of course, uh, and the language, which can be set to star for all languages. Then, how do you execute this little script? Uh, actually, you just put this PHP file on your server, on any server, not necessarily on the same website, on any server, even your local server, if you like, um, and you open it in the browser. So you just call the corresponding URL, and the script will execute and it will give you feedback like here in this case okay it, it, it tells that it has created an, artic an article called how to add an article to joomla via the api um, and indeed after that if you refresh the article manager from the back end you will see that the script has created the article so this is like really the it started with that the whole script reading the Google sheet to automate everything, it started with this little script, which we enriched together with uh, Alexandre ABZ. Then there are different versions of this little script, because here it was for the article creation post, but then you can also update. So it's the same logic, but the code is slightly different. It, it makes a patch instead of a post. OK, fine. Uh, but it's the same story. Um, and what is really nice is that when you um, create or update an article, patch an article, is that it is super easy to play with custom fields. And I use custom fields a lot. Uh, I'm very fond of custom fields. So let's suppose I have a custom field temperature. Uh, fine. How can I add a custom field in my post or patch script? Well, actually, there was just the array where we were mentioning the title and the intro text and full text. Well, I just add a line, a row to say temperature with a value. Here it is text or integer, or whatever. Uh, it is that easy. If you would ask me, Mark, here is a list of articles and we have a custom a custom field. Uh, can you write me a SQL, a SQL query to add this in the database? Oh gosh, uh, um, there are it's in different tables and there are joints or whatever. I'm no I've no knowledge of my SQL, but basic knowledge. So it would be quite technical, difficult to do that. Here it is super simple because you can have as many custom fields. It's just a question of saying temperature, uh, arrow, uh, and the value, and that's it. Yeah? With text? T? Oh, tags, okay. Ah, sorry, I was hearing. Uh, uh, I don't remember. I should, I should read my own presentation. Uh, wait. Um. Ba -ba um. Yeah. Um. For example, no. I see my tags. I see my tags. No. No, I don't. I, I'm not sure. I don't mention it in the presentation, so maybe I did not have a need, so I did not try to investigate that. So I don't have the answer. Maybe it is as easy, but uh, I have no clue. Um, so the thing is, where was I now? Um, yeah, the custom fields. Um, so, um, okay, and if you execute, you would see that you have the right value uh, in, in the article obviously. Uh, what you can also do, because here we saw the creation, the update of an article, but you can also fetch Joomla articles. So if, if somebody asks you, oh yeah, you have a website, but we would like to pull your articles to put it on our intranet or on another website or whatever, uh, you can open your website uh, and for example, 
I could say, okay, for the category films, uh, I could say, here is the URL, and you can pull everything. They get that in JSON format, and they can code whatever to automate what they want to do with this information. So uh, my own website can become can offer a web service. Uh, so this is a get, and basically it's always a very similar script. Uh, okay, a bit shorter because we are not creating, so we don't have to specify much. Um, we just say, for example, here which category ID we want to display, um, and yeah, and if we do that, okay, the people calling this script would see the result or the articles of this given category. Um, you can also delete, of course, right? So it's not my goal. I don't need the API to delete. I, I do it very well <laughs> with my mouse. But okay, why not? Maybe if you have to synchronize to database or whatever, uh, it could it could be useful. Um, so these were the little snippets to uh, create patch uh, or delete uh, art or display or delete or delete articles. And then came the question of, okay, how to trigger those scripts? Um, okay, um, different ways. Um, because here, at first, I was just opening my browser, typing the URL, enter, and that was it. Then I thought, okay, that's nice for me because I know where the script is and for me it's obvious, but for my end users, it would be nicer uh, to have buttons. So actually those buttons in the backend it's just a custom HTML module and with links with links to, to, to the scripts. Okay, to the big version of the script importing from the Google Sheet. Um, but you could also say that's nice when you want to synchronize manually or import manually, but maybe you want to automate that and every day or every week synchronize with the Google Sheet. Then you can just use the Joomla task scheduler which is another underrated, uh, underused uh, feature of Joomla 4. So if you go to the um, system schedule tasks, you click on the new button and you choose, because uh, there are several examples, and you choose the get example. And in the get, you would just put the URL of your script. And then you would have a kind of cron job calling your script at the frequency that you like. Yeah. Well, yeah, because what I show is from a Google Sheet because it's nice for people to type. Typically, uh, there are a team of five people working at the office from home at the same time on this Google Sheet. But when the script accesses the Google Sheet, actually it accesses the CSV version of that Google Sheet. But this I mentioned right after. Um, okay, this is a nice practical way to trigger because in the task scheduler, you could say, oh, I just uh, enable or disable or change the frequency. So it's more comfortable than to create a real cron job from, uh, from, your, from your host. Uh, another way to trigger any script would be to use the command line interface. Uh, and here I give the details. And a good reason to do that is that, for example, on, on this website, uh, there are only a few hundred films, so the script can run, maybe it runs for three minutes and all my articles are synchronized. But I have another website, very similar to this one, same customer, where they have 3,000 articles. And there, it was annoying because after, I don't remember, maybe uh, 600, 700 articles, I had a timeout, yeah, because I was triggering the script from the browser. So actually, if you use the command line interface, if you use the console just to, trig to trigger, to call your script, then there is no timeout. So I don't even have to bother anymore. I can launch a script and it will go through uh, the whole 3000 articles in my case. Um, and it's quite easy because Normally, I never use a console. I never have this need, right? It's uh, uh, well, I don't. I don't have this need. So, 
actually i use not file i use win scp and i have nothing to do there is just a menu item i can say command and uh, console and i can directly type my my command there a very easy way to to do it um or my own host when i access my panel and there is a web file manager and there is a button just a simple button calling the console where i can type the command and it's very easy because it's directly in my browser so i don't have to bother about i don't know ssh and all the necessary stuff which are maybe a bit too technical for um for simple users um yeah and on average i i even for my example with 3000 articles 16 custom fields plus the 10 native fields it would take on average half a second for each article to be synchronized so it's quite fast uh, considering that everything since it is made properly if i would directly edit the database um, okay the articles would be updated but joomla does more than that natively because when you click on the from the interface on the save button you are triggering a series of things like the smart search the index of the smart search gets updated when you click on save uh, if you have versioning versioning is triggered when you click on save and other things like that so actually here because we are not editing the database directly but we are using the joomla api everything that joomla does from the interface will also be triggered uh, using here the api so it's it's very clean because your smart search is indexed and, and and everything and also for example in the user uh, actions log if you have enabled the user actions log you see exactly which articles was edited uh, by whom in this case by my joomla api user um, so half a second given that all this happens is quite efficient um, then there is a question of you should be the only one who can run the script if you want to secure your script even more you could uh, add um, an ht access saying that only your ip address can trigger it but then you could say yes mark but you told us that you could also trigger it from the task scheduler and so okay i give also the details when you're using the task scheduler uh, so that even from the local host it is allowed um, and if your api token is at risk if you have any doubt just reset it right don't forget so now the core part how many minutes do i still have he has no clue <laughs> like 10 okay anyway now i was joking at the start that everything is written down in details maybe you don't need every detail but everything so don't worry even if i go fast you just have uh, the rest of your life to to read uh, what i wrote um so then um with alexandre during weeks and months we improved the script because every time okay he's more on the coder side and i'm more on the creative side <laughs> for this like mm, a, a new nice feature would be to be able to say in the google sheet only synchronize uh, lines 100 to 300 because you don't need to resynchronize things which are already and so ah uh, okay i will see and two days later there was a new version of the script so we, we kept playing together like that for months uh improving the scripts adding adding features like um for example when the script creates the article from the google sheet if by accident um just like when you are in the joomla interface if you create a new article and you give it an alias which is already taken by another article you get an error message and the article is not created so when you create an article from the api it's the same thing the api will try to create there will be an error it cannot create it but the script for example will continue with the next row it will continue processing because otherwise it was annoying every time you had there was a mistake yep 
Yeah, you can. You can. Uh, it's also mentioned in the everything log of Joomla. So, um, uh, but so it keeps working on the whole list, and for all the articles where it could not create or update, it puts them on the second queue. When it has finished the first queue, it goes to the second queue and it tries something because most of the time the reason why it is rejected is that the alias was already taken uh, for some reason and then it just retries to create or update those articles but by adding a random number after the alias you had chosen in the Google Sheet. So in many cases it's fine and it creates the ar or updates the article and then you are just left with the rows where there was a real error because for example some custom field is mandatory compulsory you have to fill it in like in the back end if you leave it empty you cannot save right here is the same if in the google sheet you have a, com a mandatory field that you left empty or maybe it's an email but you just wrote uh, mark at worldweb.be but you did not write mail to uh, double punt. Uh, uh, well, of course, it's, it's, you, you have to type it correctly, otherwise there is an error. And um, so, these are the only things. And then, as I was, as you was, as you were asking, if you really need to dig into that and think, why are those three rows not imported? And you you don't understand. You can go to the logs and see the error of Joomla saying that. Ah, the custom field X had no value, and then you can uh, correct for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's just, it is already, it's not dumb, it's a, it's a bit smart because it puts everything in the second queue with, and it will try to, to change the alias, but it's not listening to the error message. I don't even know whether Joomla sends an error message to the API, which could be fetched by the script, but then the script becomes huge. Here the, the, the yeah, here the ID, the idea was to have a one-page script. Eventually, because I had many, many IDs, and Alexandre was kind enough to <laughs> every time to um, uh, to code them. Okay, maybe if you print it, it's three pages. But I mean, it's not a huge, uh, a huge thing that cannot be maintained. It's it's quite quite short uh, for what it is. Oh yeah, but for this, it's not even a question of the Joomla API. For this, you only need a task scheduler in Joomla, which would execute a task. That task would be to run through all the articles of category X and do something if something. And this already, already almost exists. <laughs> uh, because Elisa coded something like that, which will be published uh, quite soon on cool cat dash campus dot dot com okay so uh yeah and task schedulers i'm I'm surprised that it's so powerful it could be so useful and there should be like 100 task schedulers on the jet because there are so many little things that could be done like this um and uh we don't see that many so uh there was one by uh zero twenty four to um, 
uh, when your articles are, are locked, uh, which unlocks all items, articles and the rest, of course. So, yeah, I was expecting more task schedulers that you could download from here or there, GitHub or the Jet. But that's another topic. Um, so, for the Google Sheet, because we don't have much time um, left, um, of course, we have to create one column for each field that we need, like the title, the alias, and, and, and the custom fields by using the alias of the custom field. Um, then we have to share the Google Sheet the usual way. So I'm sorry, the screenshot is in French because I cannot switch to English in, um, on, on Google Sheet, but uh, you just select File, Share, but there you share just one tab because then it's easier. Even if you reorder your tabs, it will be fine. And you choose a, a comma separated value, CSV format. And this is what you will uh, copy and then paste in the long script uh, made uh, together with uh, Alexandre. Um, so if I take uh, the script of Alexandre, I just click here. It's loading. It's not loading fast. <laughs> I don't know whether there's the internet. Oh yeah, okay, good. Um, okay, so there are different little parameters uh, that you will want to uh, customize. So maybe I should zoom a bit. Can I change the width there? No, I cannot. Uh, here the the variable CSV URL is where you will put the link to your own Google Sheets, right? Then, because um, with time, uh, with time we added many features. So, um, actually, with one Google Sheet, you could send articles to different websites. Well, most of the time, I do it only for one website. But so this is why you you can say okay. This will send it to uh, coolcatcreations-campus.com, uh, for example. Uh, okay, and but if I want to send each row to a different website, I could do it just by filling every time. Um, okay, a value which I will put in the corresponding column of the Google Sheet and then the corresponding uh, URL of the website. And for each website, then I will have to paste here the token, the API token. Um, and basically, that's it. If you have custom fields, then of course, you will add here the custom field uh, alias, like temperature, comma, uh, city, comma, etc. Um, and that's enough. But Again, every time with time, we added features. So if you only want to create or import or synchronize certain lines of your, um, of your Google Sheet, it's a bit like when you print a document where you can say from page 100 to 200. But you could also say, I want the rows 5 to 7. I want row 10. I want row 200 to 250. So you could even specify some some crazy combination um, of lines. Um, so this is explained here in the presentation. And if you execute the script, um, okay, that's a screenshot. But back then, uh, it was the old version of the script. Uh, it was not very much readable because displaying the feedback was just for fun. Because what is important is that the article was created or synchronized. It was just a, con a visual control that something was happening. Otherwise, people are like, I have a blank screen, nothing happened. Yes, it did happen. Um, but now, if with the current script, when you launch the script, because I made it uh, during the, pre the previous session, um, when you launch the script, you, you have one line of report when, where, you say, where you see whether it was a success or not with the timestamp and, and everything, so that you can check after um if you need to check something um where am i here 
so um yeah when i'm always saying that you can create or update articles what is the difference in the google sheet is that there is a column id it's the id of the article in joomla so when you first launch the script it will create the article but of course the article does not have any id yet in joomla so in the first in the column id we if we set zero the script we know that you want it to create the article if you put a real value like one two three then it will understand that you want to update the article so um, in practice what i do is that i have uh, the google sheet the first time i have zeros everywhere because the articles don't exist yet i launch the scripts all articles are created then I just go on the website, I check for the IDs, oh, okay, it goes from 123 to uh, 455, okay. I go back to the Google Sheet and I, I type and drag and drop <laughs> uh, the IDs so that every time I will run the script again, it will not try to recreate the articles, but it will update the existing articles. Um, yeah, that's what I'm explaining. Two rounds. Um, yeah, the, the script is as smart as possible for a small script. Um, but when, when you get errors, um, yeah, it's like if, if for a custom field you forget to mention mail to while it is a email custom field, you will get an error it cannot be saved just like when you are in the interface um, within a given category an alias can only be given once so you could have the same alias several times on a given website as long as those articles are in different categories right but if it's in the same category like in my case films no i can only have a given alias uh, once um then you can also have fun because um sometimes you want to manipulate the publish up publish down uh you just take the names of the database right publish up is the publication date uh i don't know how it's called in the interface uh starting publication date and then ending for publication uh etc so publish up publish down feature up so you could add any native field. Uh, you just have them to mention them in the script if you want to add them. And of course, uh, custom fields. Uh, I give several examples of custom fields. I also use a lot, um, like uh, Elisa showed in her session, the custom field by regular labs, which is articles fields, uh, because it allows to link an article to another. And even here, I can, I can use it because what does the articles field do in the database when you say, I don't know, a, a film is made by Steven Spielberg and Steven Spielberg has a, a page, an article with an ID. When you save that in Joomla, what the custom field does is that it just saves the ID of the article. So in the Google Sheet, I can use that. I just have to know the ID of the corresponding article but it just works. If you have a date that you, for a custom feed or for publish up, publish down, whatever, you have, of course, also to type it. Again, it's, the logic is always do as it is in a database. So uh, it's year, dash, month, dash, day, space, hour, uh, etc. cetera. Um, then if you want to add custom fields as I was uh, quickly mentioning if I have three custom fields I would just add them like this um, in the script mm, that's the example and then at some point because every time we were excite excited that oh there is new version new feature and then every time I had new use cases like oh yes but now a custom feed of type subform or uh, there it is more tricky because in the database 
it is written in JSON format, just like also for images, the intro images with its caption and blah, 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 uh, are all written in JSON format. So um, I also explain here how you can write this correctly in the Google Sheet so that it is imported uh, correctly in Joomla, but so the script is also able to manage that. Same if you have custom fields with multiple values like uh, list or checkbox. If you have fries, chocolate and beer, uh, okay, in the Google Sheet you have to type it as in JSON format basically. Um, so I also have a formula uh, in, in Google Sheet to transform, uh, to transform a simple list in JSON. Uh, this is explained here. Uh, the performance, as I mentioned, just use if if really performance is is an issue that you are at risk of reaching the timeout, then just use the the command line interface, the console to launch the script. Also, in the first stage, when I had not thought of that, I was what I had done is that I had disabled temporarily the versioning and the smart search indexation because, okay, Joomla has less things to do, so it could import more articles in, in one go. Um, okay, also some troubleshooting because when I was doing my own test, everything was always going fine. When my end users were filling in the Google Sheets, every time there were issues and some of them were obvious, like mandatory field, which was empty, okay. Um, but other ones were really tricky, like uh, special characters in the Google Sheet. Like if you look at, uh, in French, oh, sorry, l'oasis, there is a comma, uh, how do you call that? Um, apostrophe, yeah. But somehow, because they make copy paste from, I don't know, a Mac or, I don't, I don't want to know. But instead of having a regular apostrophe, it was a kind of curly apostrophe. So on the screen, I would not even really see the difference. But this only was 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 crashing the script because the script was interpreting this as a double as a quote a double quote. So it was crashing. Um, or like if they were having in one character the triple dot it would also crash somehow because, okay, special character. So you could have things like that, uh, special cases, or conflicts with some other plugins that you could have on the website if they are not properly coded. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you use the, the, this script or you're speaking of some other use? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also with time, because sometimes people wanted to type, when they were typing the uh, intro text, full text in the Google Sheet, yeah, they don't type in HTML. They type like, so when they do control enter to go to a new line it was imported but there was no html for break line or for new paragraph so um here is a little formula if you want to replace the control enter by the corresponding real html uh, tag so that uh, when it is imported you have a nice layout um, so there are different versions of the script the one i've just gone through quickly is, is the most advanced ones. The other ones uh, are also there, but with less feature because we concentrated on one version of the script because there was another one, instead of um, importing from Google Sheet to import from Airtable. Uh, so it's a basic uh, version and I did not adapt the presentation. Um, lack of time because I have already written a lot. Um, but there are also other ways, because here I'm so excited about the Joomla API and it's so handy. I use this script a lot to import my 3000 articles uh, and everything, but there are also other solutions. So uh, as I mentioned this morning, 
ROCSVI by Roland Dalmeder. Uh, it's a Rolls Royce uh, if you want to import, export, and do plenty of things like that. And there is also Joom Grabber, which I've never used, but I've heard good feedback about it. And also uh, a smaller uh, extension, CFI by Joomline, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's free and maybe it's enough for you. Um, so I would like to thank Peter Martin because it triggered uh, this whole thing with this presentation at the last Joomla Day uh, DAG. So, uh, and, many, and thank you to many people in the community for being J positive. If you have any feedback about this, don't hesitate. Uh, I'm, I'm not far. <laughs> thank you.